So I didn't want to make this video too dramatic, but to some degree, all of our security online, and I think most of the world's online economy and our really the stability of our societies, at least modern advanced societies that use the internet to buy things and sell things and store personal information is really based on one thing. And that thing, that property, that assumption that we're all trying to make, the assumption that underlies a lot of the encryption that goes on online is a pretty simple one. That assumption is that factoring is hard. So remember, we had this idea of a trap, oop, hard, hard, factoring is hard. We had this idea of a trapdoor function. And we use trapdoor functions to enable something called public key cryptography, which is widely used online. And the one really sort of set of trapdoor functions that we've been able to develop is all based around this assumption that it is very, very difficult to factor large numbers. So let me give you an example of the type of problem that we're looking at. So let's say that we have uh, two prime numbers. Remember, prime numbers have only one factor. So a prime number is only divisible by itself and one. Seven is an example of a prime number. Nine is not a prime number because nine is divisible by three. Seven is a prime number, 11 is a prime number, 13 is a prime number, 17 is a prime number. These are all examples of numbers that can only be divided by themselves evenly, by themselves and one. And it turns out, it's actually really fascinating, when you get out into these huge, 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 huge numbers, there are still a lot of prime numbers out there. And so what we can do is we can do the following. We can take two large prime numbers, let's call them P and Q. Now, if you give me two large prime numbers, it is very easy to multiply them together. That's just multiplication. So I can take P times Q, and I can get a new number called N. Now, remember, P and Q are prime. So they can only be divided by themselves and one. And so it turns out that n only has three factors. n can be divided by q, p times, n can be divided by p, q times, and n can be divided by one. So n is not prime, it has two factors, but n only has three factors, or well four factors, itself, one, p and q. So it turns out that so again, if I give you P and Q, it is very easy to compute N. You just multiply them together. If I give you N, it is very hard to compute P and Q, particularly if N is really, really big and if P and Q are both very large. So if I take two really, really, really big prime numbers and multiply them together to get n, which is the, just the multiplication of the two prime numbers, then if I give you n, it is very, very hard, and you would have to spend an enormous amount of time and computation to factor n and recover p and q. So you can sort of see where we're going here with this. n is, so, it, it, and it turns out that I can create encryption systems based around this fact, that even if I know n, I'm not telling you p and q. So the secret that I have that unlocks the trapdoor function that I'm going to use in these types of encryption systems is that I know p and q. I can tell you n, and you can use n in various ways to encrypt messages. But if you don't know p and q, you can't decrypt those messages. So this is, again, like I said, the basis for our online economies, the basis for all of the uh, sort of uh, certificates that are used online. And so what would happen if suddenly somebody came up with a way to factor huge numbers really easily? The world would probably collapse. I mean, I'm not sure I would want to be alive during that time because suddenly all the inform secret information online could be easily recovered by anybody. Um, 
you know, be extremely easy to access information that's supposed to be private. It would be impossible to verify that certain messages were sent by the person you were sending them to. It would be impossible to verify that you were at the website that you were trying to go to, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the world would really, really totally probably melt down at that point. Happily, We've had crypto systems based on this assumption now for several decades. And it seems to be holding. Now, there are plenty of problems with those systems. There are plenty of bugs and other issues. But this core assumption that if I choose two large primes and multiply them together and get a number, you can't easily recover those two primes, that core assumption seems to be holding. And again, it's good at hold it's holding because if it didn't hold, uh, there would be chaos.